Hi everybody, Colin Singer here. Today I want to discuss the problem of long processing times, backlogs, and delays that applicants to Canada are experiencing, as well as employers who are looking to bring in foreign nationals. Currently, it's publicly known that more than two million applications are in the stream for different categories across all programs that are awaiting processing, awaiting decisions, and awaiting finalization. These are across, as I said, all different categories. That includes work permits, that includes applications for citizenship, and of course, applications for permanent residence. A large problem that was caused during COVID was that many applications were being received by government. The government had a very aggressive and a bold mandate to bring to Canada for the first time many hundreds of thousands of applicants, and those numbers had never been seen before in the immigration historicals during the last 100 years. And the mandate of over 400,000 applications was reached, but in so doing, the government has created a problem, a backlog of pending applications. And of course, on the permit side of work permits, study permits, those streams also increased significantly during COVID. And now we're into 2022, and we are all facing the challenges of having to wait for decisions and waiting for results for people to come to Canada. Uh, recently, the government uh, started to, um, on the permanent residence side of things, they started to bring to Canada an issue uh, invitations to apply under the express entry immigration system. Uh, for the first six months of this year, there was a pause on applications to uh, individuals who were in the pool of express entry. Uh, you were not going to see uh, draws if you were overseas. The all program draws were on pause. As well, the government cut in half the anticipated numbers of uh, invitations to apply that were going to be issued in 2022 was cut in half from 110,000 to 55,000. So starting in July, we started to see invitations coming from draws that started on July 8th. There was a second one in the month of July. And each month, we expect to see two draws under the express entry all program stream. Prior to this pause in the all program stream, there were draws being held under other streams, notably the PNP streams, uh, which applicants who are directed to certain provinces continue to receive invitations. So what is the solution? For applicants to Canada, you're a candidate, you want to come to Canada, what is your solution that you're looking at? What is the strategy that you can deploy if you want to come to Canada? Well, first and foremost, it's important to know that the mandate that the Minister of Immigration has put forth is that new invitations that are being issued now since July the 8th, 2022, will be processed for permanent residents, assuming they have all the hallmarks and all the elements to support the application, they'll be processed in six months. That means the government is creating two parallel tracks, one for the backlog, in which they will continue to eat away and reduce and whittle down, hopefully, the uh, enormous numbers in the previous uh, lifespan of, of, of processing applications. But a new track has been created, and that is applications who, who receive, applicants who receive an ITA and submit an application, a full perfected application for permanent residence. The mandate is to process those applications in under six months. What is the solution if you're an intending candidate, an applicant to Canada? Well, it's very clear that you must submit a profile under Express Entry. Without a profile, you cannot be considered for any invitation under, for example, PNP programs or rural programs like the Sudbury program or the Atlantic program. So you must create a profile. And don't be dissuaded by the fact that current scores are relatively high since express entry draws resumed in July. 
scores are intended to, are, are anticipated to come down. So as more draws are going to be held, you can expect that the CRS score likewise will come down. So at least get your profile into the system so you can be a candidate for one of many employers or a province or possibly uh, a federal draw, an all program draw if you have the right score. But if you don't have the right score and you are uh, able to recognize uh, what you need, it's clear the uh, advice is you should consider a visit to Canada. Currently, Canada has various historic lows of unemployment, a very robust labor market. And if you're very motivated to become an immigrant to Canada, create your profile in the express entry system and plan to visit Canada and consider outlying areas of the country. We've said this before. Don't just focus where 60% of immigrants come to Canada, they go to the, the greater Toronto area. Look to areas outside the major uh, cities and look to employers who we know are looking for, for help. And if you are a, a qualified candidate, that will speak loudly. An employer will listen to you, likely if you push the right buttons and you are trained on how to get through to a hiring manager, there will be many employers who will be ideally interested in your profile. We work with many candidates, as, as everyone knows. We have an excellent uh, coaching strategy where we help you create that profile for employers to look uh, and, and attract the attention of an employer. So traveling to Canada and looking for a job. This is what you need to consider for you to stand out uh, from others in the system, others who are looking for employment. If you're in Canada and you've contacted an employer and you inform them that you're able to meet face to face or get on the phone, but they know you're available, uh, this is going to be much more impacting uh, for either a permanent residence application because an employer who wants to hire you, you can access permanent residence programs uh, in a province under PNP, or possibly you might be qualifying for a work permit. So if you are a candidate, um, you need to consider visiting Canada and looking for a job. Another suggestion, which we help everyone uh, strongly direct their attention, is improve your English language. Even if you are a 7 uh, benchmark, a 6.0, a 7.0 uh, on your IELTS, on the CLBs, if you are really motivated to improve your score even incrementally, uh, this could impact the score you're going to get overall. So working to improve your IELTS score or uh, other uh, acceptable uh, language tests for English or for French, improving your language skills will situate you to increase your score. Uh, if you are an employer, uh, what you want to consider is sourcing candidates, for example, who are already in Canada. Under the postgraduate work program, candidates are available to be employed. Uh, if you are interested in hiring, a graduate from a program, obviously, those are entry-level positions. Uh, those candidates can convert into a full-on work permit. So sourcing candidates who have an excellent profile, who have a degree and are currently on a postgraduate work permit, you can look to source candidates in that particular category. Uh, if you are looking for a more seasoned individual, Source candidates from areas where processing times are not historically long, which means uh, finding people who have easy access to Canada uh, will allow you to bring people to Canada in literally a month or two. If you have the knowledge of which candidates, you start your sourcing strategies to focus on candidates who are not being processed from posts where the processing times are unacceptably long, then you can direct your attentions to work in sourcing candidates
who really have low barriers to entry to Canada. At immigration.ca, along with our sister enterprise skilledworker.com, we can help you identify those kinds of candidates if you are an intending employer to intending to source candidates from overseas. Take a look at our content, like our content, and follow us. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for today.